the stuff out, all this equipment, get it in shipping containers and get it to, to Germany. Sure. <laughs> but unfortunately, um, that didn't transpire. So the lawyers filed in the B.C. Supreme Court um, for a trial on all this stuff. Holy smokes. And the attorneys then thought that they could actually arrange by contact to government people to um, have it released and um, put in shipping containers, which it eventually did get into shipping containers. And what happened was the government seized it, the two containers, the yeah. government seized the containers. They seized the containers again. If I can ask, under what authority? I mean, oh, their their excuse was um, it contained polychlorinated biphenyls or PCBs, and normally Tesla coils and those kind of machines don't. The test gear, yes. This is an interesting story because they tried to keep it secret, but again, the press found out about it and made the front page of the Vancouver Sun newspapers. Okay. Uh, can you can you recall the date that that made the front page of the Vancouver Sun? 1990, February 22, approximately. 1990, February 22nd. About that time. Okay. I got a copy of it, of course. Okay. I got a copy of it from a journalist when I was in Europe. Uh, do you have a copy of that article handy? Yeah. I can, can you read me part of it? I, w I would like to hear about that. Oh, well, I got it in my, like, I got so many documents there in boxes, it would take me a while to... Well, uh, this that's place. all right then. Uh, but I can, you know, I can always JPEG it and send it. Okay. Um, that's no problem. All right. Um, some, sometime, I mean, I have, would have to do it later. All right, what was the article like? I mean, it, it talked about your materials well, being seized. Basically saying that um, um, ministry, um, that's part of the government up here, secretly builds... PCB site in Surrey, and it goes into the article, and then there was this paper chase. They found all these weird machines, um, big glass balls with um, wires coming out of them. Mm -hmm. Involved a lot of officials from the police department, from the um, other governments who were there. Names I'm trying to remember. Lynn was one name. Um, and then it goes on in this lab being moved, and then it states inventor goes to ground. It's kind of a typical newspaper story thing. What do they mean by inventor goes to ground? You, uh, well, basically... Disappeared? Um, well, not that. It seems that uh, it's kind of a statement that newspaper people use. Yes. Um, meaning that, uh, well, here is this guy doing levitation experiments, and I guess when they took the lab... The guy I mean, can't levitate anything, so he goes to ground, I guess. I think that's the jargon that the newspapers... Normally, uh, here, when when you say somebody goes to ground, that means they go to hiding. Oh, no. <laughs> so that was a little pun. It was a bit of a pun, yeah. I see. I covered um, a bit of the story, the paper chase, and who is John Hutchison kind of thing. Where did he go to? Although they knew I was in Germany because I got contacted by... Um, the um, by Interpol also got contacted. Interpol? Yeah, they charged the house that I was staying in because they felt that um, I was being held captive by um, people from the East Block. I know there was East Block interference, what? a lot of it. And I wrote to Dr. Pappas in Greaseland. Um, in Greece, that is. It's Greaseland is the German <laughs> word. But... Um, and he said, no, there's a game going on. It's a dangerous game. Be careful. The game of the agents involves names and all that. So the Germans were protecting me. However, um, I assure you... The, the, the East Germans were protecting you? No, no. Um, the fellow in um, Greece, Dr. P.T. Pappas, was protecting me with information, which I passed on to the German people who were protecting me against any kind of interference from the East Bloc people that wanted this technology. Oh, okay. So, basically, uh, Interpol made a decision that I am A-OK, -okay. I'm not being kidnapped, and wrote the reports and filed them somewhere, where, I don't know. Um, then I got a phone call from Henry Champ of NBC, and he said, this is going to be a sound, very odd question, Mr. Hutchison. Um, are you being kidnapped? Mm-hmm. I said, not that I'm aware of. You know, I kind of have a sense of humor about these things. And um, Basically, he apologized and said, okay, I just wanted to know somebody was 
worried about you being kidnapped. And I said, no, um, things are going well. Then when I phoned the Canadian government, um, I was warned that if I returned to Canada, to Vancouver, that I might be arrested. Arrested? Yep. For what? For having this laboratory. Uh... I don't know why. Um, however, when I had to come back here, um, I did meet the representative, um, Richard Glue of the Environment Protection Agency, and he showed me all these documents, which he actually gave, gave them to me showing all the procedures and things that went on when I was away about this laboratory. And um, he sp he basically, he said, well, this is something I can tell my grandchildren, kind of thing. About, and I said, okay, but you said you have some of it in storage for me, which he did have, and that was all the test equipment with the PCBs. Anything with, related to Tesla was gone. and Anything related to Tesla was gone. Totally gone, and which came, contained no PCBs. And so this big whoop to do about PCBs, they didn't give a damn about anyway, obviously, because they gave it, they were going to give it back to you. Did they did give it back to me, and I was so ticked off. And so it was all BS in the first place. They wanted access to the parts of the equipment they wanted. They and then they got it too, because I tried through my dad's um, ideas of trying to contact the different government officials. Um, I got one person who said, "Well, it cost ten sorry, $20,000 to move it. I said, okay, but where is it? And they just said, well, we don't know. And we, we don't know. Yeah. And was, to this very day, that part of the equipment is gone? To this very day, it's gone. Um, something surfaced a couple of years ago that um, the location of the lab was put under what they call the Alex Fraser Bridge. It's a huge suspension bridge in Vancouver. Yes. On a vacant lot, and... This action of them putting all this stuff was tipped the Vancouver Sun papers off, uh, saying something strange is going on here. So that's how they it got into the press. But when uh, Canadian Television Network tried to get down there to videotape all this stuff, they were blocked by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Wow. Yeah. yeah it sounds crazy, but it's <laughs> more of a screwy. Well, I shouldn't use that word, but. Uh, I was east to the Rockies, called toll free 1 800 825 5033. All that stuff. And All right, wait a minute. Um, I'm kind of running around. Don't, here. don't name uh, names of the company. Um, okay, but sorry. I, I took that out. But you were coerced, you mm -hmm. said, by uh, uh, some agents of a, of a company? Uh, Canadian Security Intelligence. And coerced, coerced how? that they wanted me to work with them, that they'll pay me $300. This is stepping back a couple of years prior to the stealing of the lab. Three, $300 what? Per week to be the first, to have their first options with me to work with them. Sorry, I'm jumping back and forth. That, like that's a, quite all right. And, and you, you told them what? Well, I told them, okay, um, let's see what happens. And um, So you took their 300 a week? I took their 300 a week, and I was curious on what these people were going to do. Because by this time, I was away from George Hathaway and the protection of the U.S. government guys like Colonel Alexander, who I respect really highly in his opinions and correcting me for certain mistakes I might make in my talks. Um, but these guys um, started bad-mouthing Alex Pizarro, um, who actually founded me and some of the other scientists at that time. All of a sudden, they simply just disappeared. This company was totally gone. They didn't exist. <laughs> next step was the Boeing people that came in. And then, of course, the next step was the lab was to be transferred to Germany, actually to, the, uh, to Austria, into a massive laboratory by very high-ranking scientists that... Um, a real size, not suitable. All right, what, assuming that they had the financial means, and it sounded like they did uh, in Europe, mm -hmm. why not rebuild uh, or duplicate the machinery in Europe? Uh, Tech was sending it over there. Why not try and duplicate it over there? That's a good point you brought up. We felt it would be, um, at that point, an easy move. Um, other circumstances happened, however... In, in Europe at that time, it was over there for two years, 
Now, in, in 